Oh baby, I'll tell you what, I've been excited for this one. Today we're trying Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden. If you're not familiar, this is the brand new game from Don't Nod, the same developers behind Life is Strange and Vampire. And if somehow you haven't tried those games, they are very narrative focused, with Vampire being one of my favorite games to play on a rainy day. The main things I love about Don't Nod games is that they're very, very narrative. They tend to come in with more of a double A feel as opposed to like the full commercialized quadruple a blockbuster behemoth that loses all soul in its presentation so typically they're a little bit more lean they're more narrative story focused focused on characters and they also tend to present some more novel and interesting gameplay ideas they're not afraid to experiment and so when focus entertainment reached out and asked if they could sponsor me to play this game ahead of time and share it with my audience i said <laughs> sure i was giddy so again, thank you to Focus Entertainment for sponsoring this video and letting me share it with you today. I will also say that the developers and Focus Entertainment said that I'm allowed to say whatever I think positive or negative while I try the game today. They hope that I like it, of course, and I'm expecting I probably will, but I made sure that we were under the understanding that I was allowed to say whatever I want, and they were okay with that, which, as I've said with all of these other videos I've done like this, that's kind of exactly what you want to hear from a developer or publisher trying to sell you a game. It's like, yeah, we're that confident the game's going to be good. Say whatever you want to say, and we're confident it's going to be good stuff. You know, it, it says a lot about how confident they are in the game. But enough babbling, let's just get right into it. I have set this up with all of the graphics options absolutely cranked. As you can see, everything is running at the top of the line settings. And even when we are running, we are getting 193 frames a second at 4K with DLSS quality mode turned on. So I don't think graphical fidelity is gonna be much of a problem for us today. We're gonna to go new game. We select which difficulty we wanna choose and they have a lot of different options. Whether you wanna just focus on the story exclusively or if you wanna really crank the difficulty either which way. I'm going to choose to go normal because I typically play games the first time through on whatever the recommended difficulty is. So we're gonna do that and load in. I will also say that we're going to try to steer clear of story spoilers for the sake of this video in case you want to try it yourself. So just know that anything you see in this video is considered to be not damaging to the narrative experience, okay? Just uh, be, be uh, confident in that, that we're taking care of you that way. Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Ooh. Oh, enchanté, madame. Oh. I love me some mood lighting. When I was decorating this studio, my wife was like, what are you gonna make it look like? And I was like, ideally, I'd make it look like a dungeon because I want to like live in a dungeon, apparently. Great long fluffy bastards. Obviously that didn't happen. The sea. I dreamed of the abyss in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. So a bad dream? A good day to you, my love. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And a good day. Good morning. To you too. <laughs> I dreamed of the abyss. How was your in evening? New England. Oh, so th there was a little freeze there. There's a little freeze. Just, again, full transparency. There's a little freeze. I'll make a note of it. I'll send it off to the devs and publishers so that they can fix whatever they need to fix if that's a problem in the launch build. I am playing an early access build of the game, so it's possible this is already fixed by the time you're seeing this video. Uh, but just for the record, there was a little freeze there. Welcome to America. Hmm. Something is bothering you. I kind of like Charles's these tattoos. Letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. And we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. The hair also Red, looks pretty good. Best be ready. 
pleasantly I'll be surprised. Careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. I also love the accent. I'm a sucker. Come on, Atea. We need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith. Gallant to the last. Life to the living. Death to the dead. Consider cool. our lovers. Antea and Red. The greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say, and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Mm. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all, to haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. Hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops, June 7th, 1695. Dude, am I the only one that's like a total sucker for any June game that has Jeffrey. any water element? Like, if there are boats in your game, I probably will love it. I just, there's something in me that loves the ocean, that loves the sea. I don't know what it is. Like, it just, it makes me feel weirdly calm and, and comfortable, which I know is the opposite for a lot of people. Like, they look at the ocean and it gives them anxiety and they freak out about it. For me, I see the ocean and, like, on a ship or a boat, I, I feel like I'm cuddled up at home in a blanket on a rainy day with a good book. Like, it, it just feels so complacent and content. It's hard to describe. Anyway, the video game. <laughs> You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. Oh yeah, hot grog or two. You guys know what grog actually is? It's just watered down rum. It's terrible. Why I anybody drinks grog? I don't know. Sea voyages to grim faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. I mean, right off the bat, I'm loving the art direction. And also, in terms of graphical fidelity, the game is is up there. The one thing with Don't Nod games historically is that the lip syncing is not usually that great. But that's pretty normal for Don't Nod. And it's one of those things, like if that's your takeaway from playing Vampire or Life is Strange or uh, Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden, then it's like, I can't really feel that bad for you. If that's your takeaway from the game, it's like, well, the game's amazing, but the lip syncing's a little bad. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. If it bugs you, okay, but like for me, you get used to it very, very quickly, and the rest of the game definitely makes up for it, in my opinion. I should also point out the obvious, which is that we played through this game with two protagonists, Red and Antea. And the reason that that gets me excited and the reason I like that is because it kind of goes back to something that Resident Evil 4 did way back in the day and that then Naughty Dog kind of took up the mantle doing as well, which is creating character and player bonds through gameplay. So when you go through levels with an NPC, a non-player character, it actually helps the player build a bond with that non-player character just by way of completing various activities, working through levels together. It's a really cool thing that happens psychologically, deep, deep down in our psyches, where we're just like used to trusting an entity that like helps us through things. And it applies in video games in real life as well. And it's one of my favorite things that narrative games have started to do pretty consistently, which is to give us 
a partner to go through levels in. I mean, seriously, look at any Naughty Dog game, any uh, even game like Red Dead Redemption 2. Many, many of the missions and quests in the main story will put you with another character to explore through levels with. And it's because it actually helps you build relationships. It's great. Okay, a little combat tutorial. Ooh, a ghosty ghoulie. Light attacks and heavy attacks. Little dodge mechanic. Okay. Charge up that heavy attack and slash. Ooh, baby. Well, I kind of like that compass. It's like when I'm turned around, look. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I like that compass telling you where attacks are coming from. It's not just an arrow. It's something more. That's cool. Oh, and he's fighting down there. He's doing the same Behind thing we're you. doing. Behind you, my love. Good job. Okay, attacking with weapons fills up the banish gauge. When the banish gauge is full, press A to banish the target. Okay. Time and what does that food. do? Let's fill the banish gauge. Okay. Oh, wait. Ooh. So you like fully banish them from this mortal coil. Booyah. Okay. It's kind of like a critical finisher. Ooh, alpha. Oh, we have an alpha. I am now the alpha. Is it going to start like howling at us? Nice. Oh, oh I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. I just needed to pivot the other way. Down you go. Love it. I mean, come on. Some of these environments, I'm very impressed. Typically, Don't Nod games have a much more aggressive art style, I guess I would say. And so seeing something like this that's going for something more grounded, more realistic is refreshing. And honestly, they're doing a pretty good job. And it's important to bear in mind also that this is a... Uh, double A class game. This is coming in below the $70 mark. It's 60 bucks on PlayStation if you choose to get it. 60 bucks on Xbox. And on Steam, it's actually $50 if you choose to go that route. Will it let me go off the beaten path? It will. So some of these levels are much broader than their past games with like pretty wide open areas for you to explore and collect loot in as well. I'm not sure at this point yet what the loot will be used for four but i know i'm getting it so hopefully something <laughs> new eden town though here we go discovered so if they have a discovered animation that makes me think that there's going to be fine, even baby. more places to discover is this like a oh baby okay so there's like a pretty big ass map sorry is big ass map not like <laughs> is that not the most uh like uh, official or professional way of saying it. a large map, a large, map. I'll say that <laughs> this is when they contact me. They're like, Luke, we're glad you're enjoying the game. Your videos, you know, it looks good, but can you not say big ass map all the time? Whenever you talk about the game, I'll be like, yeah, sure. I'll play nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have purposely kept kind of quiet on this game, trying not... Oh, there's somebody looking at us through the door. Trying not to spoil anything about this game for me, because I've been interested in it. And now that I'm actually seeing it and getting the chance to explore it, I'm actually really, really digging it. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is called, your serving woman may sit while we talk. Oh. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. It is 1695. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGrath. Good day to you. What a name. Sirs, madam. Now. Awkward. Where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. Love the stash. This here is thick skin New Smith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy, though our faith. Sustains us. We are still very much in shock. 
Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. <laughs> As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. So, <clears throat> esteemed select woman can be <clears throat> brusque. Forgive her. Just like choked on my own throat. That that was weird. Far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how he found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. Okay, now we need to go meet Esther at her house. I will say, I am, like, very impressed visually i mean like don't nod's previous games were not bad looking or anything but again they were very stylistically aggressive and forward but in this case it's going for a much more grounded look and i'm i'm genuinely impressed considering like what they've done previous they really have taken it up a notch i'm i'm loving it i also think they're doing a great job with the setting and the ambiance as well like it's very Salem witch trials. That's what I was thinking of. You know, like one of these early settlements or colonies back in the late 17th century. And uh, they really are just nailing the feel and the vibe of it. But of course this time, you know, with, with like actual ghosts and stuff. <laughs> so one of the core mechanics within Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is this thing called like haunting cases. And in this, case we're dealing with charles who uh, has recently passed away nobody really knows why he's passed away but there's like a curse tied to it it's a whole thing i won't go too much into it in case you decide to try the game yourself however as you can see different characters involved in the case are presented here in the ui and they have hints tied to them that you can discover while you explore different areas or investigate the case further as you can see right here there is now a hint associated with esther where she tells us that after seeing her husband's ghost grieving widow esther davenport was deeply distressed and if we pull up this you can see that there are more hints to be found and that will lead us to an intent which can help us solve the case beyond this. So we are going to investigate his study where there will potentially be more of these hints to be found, which could help us again, solve the, the mystery even further. So to understand why a ghost lingers in the incarnate, you must gather hints about each involved inhabitant. Once the hints have all been uncovered, the inhabitant's intent is disclosed and you may complete the haunting as we can see right here okay inspect this scribbled bible verses job 13 15 when i say my bed shall comfort me my couch shall ease my complaints then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions so that my soul chooseth strangling in death rather than my life she comes to me in my dreams so somebody 
was messing with his brain. Okay, and we just unlocked a Charles hint. Charles was worried about the influence the threatening spirit had on the settler's dreams. Okay, let's keep looking and searching around. I also love this boat model. Okay, unironically, if anybody in the comment section knows where you can like get a fancy replica of famous ships and stuff, let me know if there's like a store or an Etsy seller that does it because I will buy all of them. I, I love ships, dude. I don't know what it is. I'm an addict. Okay, we just got the second hint, which was that she was exhausted by her grief. Esther was unable to leave the house to attend her husband's burial. Ooh, that's a bummer. Uh, and as a result, the intent says Esther Davenport did not properly bid her husband farewell and now suffers from it. So the two pieces, super distressed, grieving. And then she also didn't get to properly say goodbye. And therefore, that is the intent behind everything. That's what's tying all of this together. Makes sense. Okay, let's find if we can find one more thing for Charles. What will you do for my Charles? Look at that smooth transition to cinematics. The idea that this would be in a double A game if just like a few present, years ago is crazy. We'll that smooth gameplay to cinematic transition. We'll ask him what that's crazy to oh i love it okay open your map with the left on the d-pad okay we're going to the northeast to the landfall which is where he is buried like we saw in that intro cinematic running around madam it'd be one of the banishers oh you can then? talk to her I'm too late i'm sorry but if poor minister Davenport i didn't think this would work i thought it was gonna be like just a, a one word you may happen upon my companion, Red McGraith, about the place. Of course. I'm Lisbeth O'Hara. The minister said you'd have questions. Well? I I thought this was just an NPC. I thought, like, I'd bump into her, say hi, and then she would do the rainy day we're having as you walk by. But no, you can actually talk to her. Okay. I'm, like, genuinely surprised. <laughs> what, what, I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, I thought I was just, like being a dork just uh chatting to random npcs but it's an actual character that i didn't know yet so that's super cool but i mean this is something that don't Nod is known for is that they don't really let npcs go to waste there are fewer people usually in their settlements and it's usually explained away narratively like oh yeah they didn't want to be here because everything is terrible so they left but the few characters that do remain actually have a role to play in the story can i talk to this guy be warned Sure can. And cry out, and help shall come in an instant. Oh. Calm you okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, he's also a shopkeeper. Look at that. Love it. Already packed, but I never refuse a deal. Okay, and then we can sell, presumably, some of the stuff we've collected. There's also a reputation system, as you can see. Neutral neutral okay interesting if there's not a combat encounter in the cemetery i don't know what we're doing anymore i mean it's a cemetery there's got to be something what's up ah more ghosty ghoulies i can lock uh decoction okay and then i'm gonna banish i'm gonna perform a banisher's ghost of new eden or ghosts of new eden there's more than one hello Okay, block at the last second it counts as a parry. Let's try it. Oh no, I, I screwed that up. Pardon me, those stun locks suck. There's the parry. No one is Love it. Here. Oh yeah, this is one of the those moments where you're like, ooh, I wonder where he is. I'm guessing he's in the most well lit grave. <laughs> Dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. I'll tell you what. Do we have to dig him up? Is that what we have to do? A spectral mark. Oh, this is kind of cool. So I like UI that is less obtrusive and that doesn't like get in your face. And you can see right here, the way they choose to communicate like this hot and cold for quest objectives is with the glowing mark on your hand. So instead of having like a, a meter that shows, oh, from 10% to 100%, how close are you, hot or cold? Like they actually do it more passively with something like this that makes sense in the lore and context of the world. It's those little bitty touches that really, really add to it. I'm guessing this is where he died. A memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. Perform a ritual. I need more pyrite. Py pyrite. Okay, here it is. That's the pyrite I need. 
that's all I need. Some of that. Let's perform a ritual, boys and girls. Let's do it together. Okay, rituals. Banishers can perform rituals. The nature of the site determines which ritual should be performed. Performing a ritual consumes resources even if you select an incorrect ritual. So select the right one. To reveal the memories, you need to perform a hearkening ritual. Okay, so there's a hearkening ritual. Reveal an echo. Make manifest. Force a ghost or specter to appear. Maybe that's going to be used later for like spawning difficult enemies to like grind loot or something like that. That could be cool. Or summon scourge, force a scourge to appear. So in this case, we want hearkening to reveal the echo. So we select that one and then perform the ritual. In there he the is. Of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place. You do not command me. The woman in white. Who are you, ghost? Unveil yourself. Someone who doesn't care. Well, since you ask so politely. <laughs> who are you? I am everything you've ever feared. That's not good. Be gone. You have no shell, no ties, no purpose. No. But neither do you. And there he goes. And that's Damn how the it. book landed there. Okay, we got this. Charles tried to make the spiritual or spirit manifest. He failed. That's, that's cold. Just he failed. Period. Facing the terrifying entity threatening New Eden, Charles Davenport or Charles Davenport's heart gave out. Now we have both of those intents solved. Let's pick up the book. Bible found half buried in the mud of the cemetery. It's opened to those passages we saw earlier. This tie is doused with the essence of Charles's ghost as well. That's not the good. The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. Okay. Let's do it. After a closure performed by Antea, the bond between ghosts and the world will be severed for good. Okay. Back to his grave then. Let's banish him in a good way. Like not a mean way, but like a good way. Go rest in peace, my friend that I loved dearly. That kind of way. Okay. Perform ritual. Now here, damp from the snow, hearkening, reveal an echo, make manifest force a ghost or specter to appear. In this case, I think we want him to manifest as you see in the top left. So we're gonna select this, make manifest and perform the ritual. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. Indeed. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Dude, and the rain on her clothes is really good too. It's actually like seeping into the cloth. I know you're here. Look at that. Hey, buddy. And you know, Tia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. That was a good shot. Charles Davenport. Literally stepping between them. You have no good. reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Be gone, ghost! Now the awkward walk My home. Child. Also, good for her for jogging in that dress. That can't be easy. Come on, it's like an emotional moment, I know. I'm trying to cut the tension a little bit. Otherwise, we'll just feel sad because now her husband's dead and she's lonely in a godforsaken place that is um, slowly and methodically collapsing under the weight of hauntings and ghosty ghoulies. Okay, now off to the schoolhouse, which is where we are staying. And uh, I think that will complete our first day here in New Eden, which... I can't help but notice is a somewhat ironic name. Ghosts only bring misery, Red. Make no mistake, they steal life's essence from the living. Aye. They don't always do it out of malice. Give them that. The dead have no business with the living. 
The dead have no business with the living. I do declare. Letting go is hard, even for the dead. Ties bind fast. And we are paid to cut the knot. Would you banish me? If it came to. Instantly. You'll not escape me so easy. You I would bring back from the dead. That's not funny. That's a better answer than mine. Yeah, I'd with fresh <laughs> essence. Mine wasn't and that romantic. So much essence you'd return bloated with life. It's the essence from the living to feed my ghost. You with me? And then I'd kill you again for the gall of dying. I would. Then I'd kill you again for dying before I do. Sometimes you scare me. I know. Do you think Charles was right? This thing in the meeting house could be a, what did he call it, a nightmare? I really hope not. Such entities are legendary ghosts, even for banishers. We'll see tomorrow. Now, to sleep. This was a dreadful day. Now we switch and we're playing as Red. Isn't that cool? Okay, death to the dead. Where are you? You're hardly in the meeting house, are you? Mm. That's ominous. Uh-oh. This is gonna be spoopy. Three blind mice. See how they run. See how they... If anybody's ever singing a nursery rhyme like that, don't go towards them. Unless they're singing it to like a child. If they're just like singing that randomly, don't approach. Yeah. Blind, all blind. Oh, Red, can't you see? We never stood a chance. Tia, are you hurt? Where are you? I'm here, my love. What happened? It's not her. This is fake. <laughs> I'm here, my love. How mundane. Show yourself. Never trust a ghost. God came to the man in a dream and said, Behold, thou art dead. But the man had done nothing wrong and said, Lord, Wilt thou also slay the righteous? What? I knew it. Knew it. Will you slay the righteous? Be not alarmed. I bring you aid. There is no aid. There is only dereliction. Where's Antea? What have you done with her? That was Paul's. Lady, if you hurt her... You cling to love, a fool to the last. There is no love. There is only defilement. fight no we're doing this ourselves sir boss fight Your lover will betray you too. who hurt you lady banish her booyakasha we took out a hb bar oh that didn't feel good Give him back. There she is. How 
touching. You come to claim your man. You think you love him. You do not. There, in the dark of your manner, there is no love. Only betrayal. I offer you a trade. He stays and you leave with your life. I'll bargain with no ghost. You have a brain, yet you think with your idiot heart. You're weak. Oh. I'm not a doctor, but that's that's not good. She's mad now. Will you come to her aid now, when all is lost? That's a cool shot. If you do, I'll be waiting. That felt like one of those big moments that happens, like, as the game Marble. ends, not they like the stand. intro. Okay, now, after that big thing that just happened, we are going to be introduced to kind of the core gameplay mechanic at play in this game. I guess that's a, a pun. I didn't mean it to be. Anyway, one of the core ideas within this game's design is that you are trying to fight two realms at the same time. So you, you have like the natural realm and then you also have the ghostly realm as well. And one of the ways that they allow you to do that is pretty novel and interesting. And this is how Red and Antea are actually still joined I have you. except one is in one me. realm and the other is in uh the the realm of the dead as it were which provides some really interesting gameplay mechanics mm. and opportunities as you can see right here we have an unveilability now so antea can allow red to see the world from the other side of the veil and uncover ethereal elements such as spectral stains or webs and in combat antea can deal increased damage to possessed corpses there will also be more abilities that you can lock unlock as you go through the game such as tag team which allows for her to just come in and like attack while you're doing stuff, which is kind of cool. Charged heavy uh, over here, unrelenting each enemy hit by light attack, increased damage to light attacks. Invigorate, banishing enemy increases damage to the next heavy attack by 200%. That seems like it would be very, very good. I don't know which way to go. Um, I'm gonna go this way. Let's do that. Okay. And, uh, oh, <laughs> she, 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 I, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's cool, ghostly movement. She, like, zipped over there. And then I was like, but I was trying to think of a joke or some way of saying it funny. And then I just had nothing. And so it was, <laughs> this is the stuff that's normally cut out of these videos. But in this case, we're keeping it. I also kind of love this UI. I'm just going to be honest, like the parallax effect while they're at the campfire. Oh, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. We also have fast travel, rest, uh, make time go forward. Decoction charges will replenish and crafting resources and enemies will respawn. Evolution, modify your talents and presences, and then inventory as well. Here you can actually upgrade and improve your gear as you go through. So if we want to, for example, improve our armor, we can actually do that by using those resources we've collected as we've explored and we can work our way around this tree until it's fully upgraded. We could also probably upgrade this one. We can do that. We have the materials for it, voila. Then we unlock that one, but we don't have enough translucent fiber. But as you can see, I mean, eventually there's some pretty high-end stuff by the time the game is all said and done. So there's a lot here. So listen, this is technically where the game actually gets going. Everything until this point has basically been the introduction to the game, which is why we've shown it. If it seems even moderately interesting to you, I think it's worth checking out. So far, I'm having an absolute blast and loving it. 
and I'm very happy to report that because it's nice to have another narrative game to sink my teeth into. I was really worried that the first half of this year is going to be really dry for gamers like me that like more story-based stuff that's maybe a little slower and less about looting and shooting, but more about like working through a story with characters and the dynamics between them. So to see that this is actually managing to live up to expectations and even exceed them in a lot of ways is pretty dang cool. By the time you see this video, I'm not sure if I will have finished the game or not, but either way, if you want to come over to Luke Stevens Live, my second channel where I live stream, you can ask me any questions you have about the game and I can be more specific since I certainly will have put in more time since we finished filming this video right now. So by the time you're seeing this Luke of the past, which is me right now, it has only a certain amount of experience with the game, but Luke of the present, which is Luke of the future to me, but not to you, will have the ability to answer your questions. That wasn't helpful, was it? The point is, if you have questions, come by to the live streams and ask, I'd be happy to answer. But with that, I'm gonna call the video so I don't spoil anything too crazy for you. I am thoroughly impressed with this and I look forward to playing more, which is all you can really hope to say for a game you're getting to play in early access. It's like, yeah, this is so good, I wanna keep going. So thanks for watching, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Hugs and kisses, Bye bye